Reggie. All right, so check it out. Here I was, here I was, my third year of college, right? And I heard all the statistics. They said that 40% of engineering students drop out or change their major before the end of the second year. So I'm in my third year, and I say to myself, I cracked the code. See, I had gotten this far in my academic journey by mastering one particular skill, and this skill was called sucking up to the teacher. <laughs> like, I had it down to a science, y'all. I would walk into the room, I would say, good morning, professor. Top of the morning to you. Sir, that sweater is so exquisite. And those shoes, what are those? <laughs> I, I would say what I could, how I could, just to make them feel good. And so here I am in this class, I've gotten past physics, I've gotten past my calculuses, I even got past this weed out class known as statics. And so I'm in this class called dynamics, and dynamics is about to get this work. See, I didn't, I studied, but I didn't like study, study, you know what I mean? In fact, I had pride in like not having to write a lot down, but what I did do, I was sitting in front of the class, whenever he would turn and look at us, I'd make sure i make eye contact. Ooh, Doc, that is brilliant. Sir, genius is just oozing from your pores, and I'm just happy to simply partake of the morsels. I really tried to get on this good side, and I had a lot of confidence until our first exam. I walk into the room, good morning, professor, top of the morning. Oh, those shoes. I sit down, he passes out the test, put a face down. Don't start, I tell you to go, is what he says to us. All right, you got about an hour, go ahead and flip over your test. I flip over my, mm-mm. Like, was I in the right class? I understood who was around me, but I didn't recognize a single thing on that exam. So you know how it goes, right? You say, all right, I'm gonna come back to number one. You know, I ain't looking. All right, I'm gonna come back to number two, too, because the number two is not. So I said, all right, I got it. I'm gonna have to activate my next best skill. That was uh, making stuff up. So I look at the formula sheet, they got formula sheets, and I'm pulling out equations, plugging in numbers, making sure, and to the point that I'm actually looking at my work, and I'm like, ah, I'm doing pretty good. I get done before a lot of people, I'm one of them obnoxious, obnoxious people, so I get up, zip up my bag all loud, do a little stretch before I turn in my exam. Ah, thank you, doc, that was so much fun. Two weeks later came. He's getting ready to pass out the grades to the test. He says to us, this is what they do in some of your classes. Before I give you your grades, I want you to know that the average score was about 75%. I'm like, I guess I'm surrounded by average. He says, three of y'all, you did perfect. I'm proud of you. You got a perfect score. I'm really glad. Keep it a good work. I'm like, all right, that's me. It's probably Danielle. Cantus probably did good, too. Then he said, all right, a handful of you, I'm just going to be honest. You might want to see me at the class. You want to talk about whether or not you want to drop or keep going. I'm like, sucks to be them. <laughs> you pass out the test, I flip over my grade. Mm -mm. Y'all had a 44%. I understand what was going on. I'm like, Doc, look, I got a 44%. What's going on? He's like, sucks to be you. I'm just playing. He didn't say that. But what he did say to me was, Hey, man, look, you can come to class, you can compliment my outfit, you can do all this stuff, but none of that substitutes actually studying and knowing the material. And that's when I understood something. I said, hey, this is different. What got me here won't get me there. I need y'all to repeat that after me. What got me here won't take me there. Here's the thing. I'm not the only one that's got moderate success off of what we consider natural skill. I'm not the only person that has nursed a bad habits, but because we never had any type of consequences, we continue on that path. And now I hear first to face to face realizing that what got me here won't take me there. And so I had to level up. For me, leveling up was first of all writing something down, right? I had to write things down because neuroscience tells us that when we write things down, we're more likely to retain it. Not only that, we can focus more. In fact, we increase our probability of achieving our goals by 1.2 to 1.4 times our current existing probability by writing it down. Here's your chance. How can you level up? I'll tell you another thing for me. Actually practicing. Practicing, going into the library. Every single lecture, I treat it as if we're going to get tested the very next period. So I go in and say, all right, let me see if I can do that example problem in 15 minutes. All right, boom. All right, let me see if I can do the same thing, but I'll look at my notes in 10 minutes. All right, boom. It was as if I was in the gym putting up shots late at night. 
And so humbly, I go into this next test. I didn't drop the class. This was after my all, why God, me, God, why did I get this grade? Is this my purpose? What's going on? I humbly go in. The professor sees me. He says, good morning, Nehemiah. Uh, top. I'm like, doc, I ain't got time for that. I got to. Got to focus. Come up to me with all that fugazi. <laughs> Problem number one, cool, looks good. Number two, all right. Get to number three, all right, cool. I'm going to go back to the beginning because they say measure twice and cut once. Let me make sure I get it done. This time I'm one of the last people to finish. I go in, turn in my exam. To make a long story short, two weeks later we get our exam back. This is do or die for me. I didn't get a perfect score but I got a 99%. Here's this thing I want to leave with you. Thank you. Here's what I want to leave with you. That last thing, that 1% was symbolic for me because it showed me that I still had room for what? Room for improvement. And that improvement led me to eventually getting that bachelor's degree in engineering. To eventually getting that master's degree in engineering, working eight years as a research scientist at NASA, and also going on to eventually getting a PhD in structural engineering mechanics. Why? Because I realized what got me here wasn't going to take me there. Number two, it was time to level up. And what I want to make sure that you all understand is that you haven't met your best self yet. There's still room for improvement. We're all here. We still have more to go. And I truly believe that your best, my best, is yet to come. My name is Dr. Nehemiah Mabry. I am all about engineering your purpose. Make sure you follow me. I'll see you in the winner's circle. Thank you.